Rob, back to you. Well, guys, I'm so excited. I actually found somebody here from Citrix. This is Christian. You're your CTO and something, something there at Citrix, correct? That's right. Something, something. Something, something. Okay, perfect. So I had a question, and I'm just curious. When it comes to hyperconvergence, how well does that work for what you guys are trying to achieve? Well, let me be really, really clear. It's an absolutely perfect combination. Good so answer. as our joint customers look to simplify and cost optimize their infrastructure with Hyperflex, they look to do exactly the same thing with their application and desktop delivery. So I guess from a customer perspective, you could say it's a match made in heaven. Mm, okay. But yeah. I think the cool thing is, and where it really, really resonates with customers, is that realize that this is not just two completely different offerings that are kind of brought together. These are two very highly deliberately engineered solutions to enable the delivery of the next generation of data center workloads. Interesting. So you know, like, can I do, I, I love that whiteboard. Do you mind if I, I saw you kind of eyeing it. Did you like to? Can Lauren, I try do you it? mind if we come up there and? I mean, I guess we can give it Here, give us a blank minutes. screen, if you will. Okay. Let's go up. Right. Everybody, okay. please. Christian. <laughs> All right, this better so be good know, now. Well, you know, we what CTOs that, so. are pretty simple people, right? Well, so I'm going to take, I've I'm gonna take of all KD and Liz's beautifully engineered, shiny, sexy hardware. You're going to break show it down you, and make it simple? I'm going to show it's you how, how CTOs really think about this. Ah, okay, please. All right. So let me think about it this way. Okay, so when you think about a Citrix workload, first of all, we have to start with the wonderful hardware. Right. So our customers love the idea of compute, storage, and network being simple. And the reason for that is because historically, these were three separate domains within an enterprise. But you're saying there's something more than just compute, storage, and networking? Oh, of course, it's called the workload. Oh, okay? my apologies, go ahead. All right, so on top of this, we have the magic that is Citrix, okay? So within um. Citrix here, we have a number of services that live as part of any Citrix deployment, okay? They're the enabling things that you need, the bits that everybody would use to get the benefit of Citrix okay. VDI or Citrix server-based deployments, okay? okay? So you know we've got two different things, right? Are you familiar with that? Yeah, I'll let you guide me through it. Make this sure is you get your, it right. not your first show, right? We're not gonna get into that okay. right now, yeah. Okay, so VDI, we're talking pure VDI. This is a desktop construct. And app delivery, we're talking server-based app delivery. Okay, Good you got that? that? Yep. Okay, so what actually happens here is that we provision different types of VMs for different workloads, okay? So all within the simplicity of Hyperflex. But the best thing is that down here, these could be VDI, these mm -hmm. could be simple, more simple apps that you would typically find that are delivered to task workers. Okay. Okay, so what do you see from this? I see half a screen still blank. Awesome. So the first thing that you should see is the, a, the ability to mix these workloads, right? This is a really big deal, okay? So True. lots of customers who have yes, you know, yeah. very heavy 3D type scenarios mm -hmm. where you want to deliver a full VDI with huge GPU needs, okay? Very common in PLM, engineering, manufacturing. And then you've got more simple things like a call center where the guy comes in and clicks one app. Right. Guess what? All in the same box. Nice. Awesome. So. The other side of the screen is blank, well noticed, and there's a reason for that. So you heard Liz talk about the fact that customers want a cloud-like experience, but often cannot move to full public cloud for lots of different reasons. One is complexity, generally. One is legacy. One maybe regulation, or a bunch of different reasons, okay? So okay. that's why on-premise still kind of rules, right? Your premise on the premise is set. My premise of the premise is going to get even better, yeah, and I right. promise the premise, okay? So we you take... Just... The Dang. core components of Citrix, you and that. we move that into a cloud service, right? Okay. So my cloud is nearly as good as Chris's cloud, right? So all the enabling pieces, the components that you need to run any Citrix environment, move to a cloud service. You know, I actually like to use a Ciscoism here. So think of it like Cisco, Meraki. Wait, a Ciscoism? A Ciscoism. Okay, knock okay. us out. You've got to be careful how you say that, right? Yes, sir. So this is like Meraki, okay? So you have oh, the control plane is all in the cloud and the hardware is wherever the customer decides it needs to be, okay? So within Citrix Cloud, we move the control plane into Citrix Cloud, and we move this over here, which is still on-premise, all the goodness of the silver boxes, and we can deploy and manage from the cloud. So what you end up with is beautiful flexibility, beautiful simplicity, <laughs> and, as I said, a match made in heaven. That's all we need is Citrix. There I it like is. it. All right, guys, thank you, Christian. <laughs> Woo!